Hi, and welcome to Yeti at Large. This is a channel focused on making the most out of what you have, no matter where you're at. Thanks for tuning in and helping out. Try tip. It's the whole roast. I rarely do this. I was actually going to grind it up and do some uh, really cool next level stuff with it. But it's late. I felt like barbecuing. So I wanted to grill. We're going to do a series here. Um, maybe a half a dozen or so episodes on prepping. I want to change your mindset about prepping though. It's fad language, I can't stand it. Move away from that. And instead, just talk about being prepared. Your grandparents, your great grandparents, the fact that you're here proves that you come from a long line of people who prepared. I want you to think about preparedness though from the perspective of a cook on a boat. It's not the zombie apocalypse, it's not doomsday, it's not the end of the world. It's just the fact that he's a long way from shore and the only food that he's going to have is what he brings with him. So we're going to look at those perspectives from a cook on a boat. We're going to talk about meal planning. I want to send you through a bunch of just little shorts about things that I do with the car, around the house, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But the next few episodes we're going to do are really going to dive into uh, menu planning and meal prepping based on that. I'm going to show you a little basic math and a little basic organizational skills that every cook who's ever had to write a menu or feed hungry people will understand. So look at these little snippets. Maybe you'll pick something up on it and it'll be helpful for you. And at the end of this, we'll talk a little bit more about what's coming next. In the meantime, grilled tri-tip with Montreal seasoning. One of our favorite appliances here is this very small two burner next grill propane grill. I got it on sale and a scratch and dent on top of that at the end of the grilling season last year. It runs on propane and I keep several tanks on the property so that I can ensure that I can continue to cook food in the event of an outage or a supply interruption. Always shut the gas off at the tank level when you're done using it and never use a cooking appliance as a heating instrument. This property doesn't have a central heat and I don't have gas or propane. I'm going to have propane hooked up in the future, so I rely almost exclusively on my heat in the wintertime for a wood-burning stove. I installed this a couple years ago and because the chimney is exposed to the whole length of the vaulted ceiling, it is incredibly efficient and I can heat this entire house for 24 hours with half of a leftover recycled pallet. And any program of self-sufficiency and reliancy, make sure that you're able to fight a fire and treat basic medical issues within your scope of abilities. Vitamins and supplements. Yeah, I hate the fact that I'm at an age where these pill strips make sense. Um, and I really don't have that many meds that I take, just a couple, and a few supplements. But how is your inventory of those? Do you keep a good stock of them? It's amazing if you ask your pharmacist and say please and thank you, what your insurance will allow you to build 90 day, 180 day supply. A couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with severe central sleep apnea. I would literally stop breathing for two and a half minutes at a time during my sleep. I can't even tell you the devastating effects it had on my emotional, mental, and physical health. I went and saw a doctor, I had a sleep study done, and now I'm on sleep therapy with a CPAP. If you're in a position where you have a necessary medical device, make sure that you have a battery backup system on it so that it can run in the event of power outages. This combined with my modest power generating options can at least ensure that I'm going to get a good night's sleep while I'm cooking over a wood-fired stove. One of the reasons we chose this property was because it's on a self-contained water utility. 
our water comes locally within our small community and it's distributed locally. So the risk of long-term outages are much lower than in a large municipal area. That being said, I still filter on a low pressure RO system that I maintain. I have spare filters. It's these first two that go out more often than not. And I also have supplemental zero water filtration system that I could run about 100 to 150 gallons uh, through before I exhaust those filters. That should give me enough time to make other plans. All of the prepper channels will caution you about ensuring that you have a good source of clean water and the ability to filter water. But don't forget about those other delicious liquids that you may want to consume from time to time. I buy almost all of my wine at Trader Joe's. I never pay more than $6.99 for a bottle. And I finally have a fantastic selection of European wines that I tend to favor because of the low sulfite content. Another thing to think about are reusable containers. Now, I'm not all self-righteous and preachy about it, but I travel with a cold and a hot uh, bubba. Uh, it makes sure that I never get too far without having a good beverage with me. Uh, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you know I'm a huge fan of sun tea. Uh, and if it's cold or whatnot or afternoon, I'll always keep a hot coffee in there. It really reduces your urge to stop somewhere and get a beverage that's way overpriced in a disposable container that you don't need. Uh, and one fewer stop you have to make is one less of an opportunity to have any kind of an issue with a fender bender, wasting money, losing a wallet, uh, or problems with people hanging around convenience stores. Another thing I always travel with is an inexpensive but reliable cooler. You never know what kind of deals you're going to come across and when it might be smart to get a little bit of dry ice and bring some groceries home because it was a smoking deal. Speaking of being on the road, keep your personal vehicle in good shape. Keep a good emergency kit in your personal vehicle. I always make sure I've got cords for the popular phones. I have a Baofeng radio I got off of Amazon with a little basic programming help it can get you emergency channels and I keep a rechargeable flashlight handy. I don't know if you can see this, but make sure you unplug everything, even the cords going in that can bleed power backwards to the LED light indicating it's connected. I also am a big fan of the independent GPS battery powered systems. I have just a basic refurbished Garmin here. What I like about those is they work off of satellite technology and you're not requiring cell service to get that done. I found on Craigslist a nice uh, toolbox that goes below the rail of the truck. Um, got this secured back here for $200. I keep a pretty good road kit in there. I run with a full size spare. If any of you are doing extensive commuting, I strongly recommend you dedicate some space in the trunk or the hatchback area of your SUV to a full size spare. And in that spirit, I will not use the factory jacks that they send you. These inexpensive Harbor Freight small floor jacks can be the difference between personal safety and a very bad accident on the side of the road. It's worth the space in your vehicle. I do keep a modest supply of gasoline handy. This is enough to get um, my truck several hundred miles. The stickers on them, you probably can't read, indicates they've had stable stabilizer added to them and the dates that I filled them. I rotate this frequently so this fuel doesn't get stale. And every once in a while, you find roadkill. This was on the interstate not too far from my house. All I had to do was replace the hose that was broken off of it. And I got like a $40 gas can uh, just for taking the time to pick up some garbage. When you're driving down the freeway, please secure your chains and make sure your load is uh, not going to blow out on the road. That could be incredibly dangerous. You hear that?
neither do I. Somebody asked me why I put up with the road noise for where I live. Part of the reason is this is only a few minutes from my front door. Why I choose to live where I do. It's all part of making the most of what you have. And a big part of that is utilizing the areas around you for the enjoyment and getting outdoors. So we're done scouting wood for the day because we got rain and lightning coming in and up here you don't mess with it. I asked myself years ago where I wanted to live and what I needed and this is where I came. I can't get over how beautiful it is here and it works for me. Not everything's perfect and I'm certainly not telling you to come live where I live but you got to ask yourself are you living where you want to be and doing what you're meant to be doing?